Hey, what's going on? This is Liam from Liam's Obstinitis, and right now we're going to talk about sleep. So I got a question from someone in one of my private groups who wants to know about uh, sleep and sleeping with tinnitus. Now, it's not a question about how to get to sleep in the first place when your tinnitus is loud. There are numerous ways to get around that. For example, you could use um, what I used to use, which is a a noise blocker, which like like you know, uh, play music off your computer, something like that. I wouldn't recommend using headphones simply because the the EMF. However, if you live with a partner or it's just not loud enough on a computer, then yeah, put some headphones on. It's no big deal. But if you can avoid it, avoid it. Right now, however, I still use um, I use a, a rain track on my computer. My tinnitus is gone, but I simply use it for the relaxation because it's just relaxing. I had it on for so many so many years when I had tinnitus. And now it's just weird not to have it, okay? I do enjoy the silence of working, but when I'm asleep, it's just it's a force of habit, I guess. So you can use that, that's fine. But this is a, specifically a question about um, getting poor sleep, continuing to wake up. And the funny thing is, this is very common, okay, with people who have tinnitus. They often wake up in the middle of the night and they say, they wonder, they say Liam, is it, is it my tinnitus is waking me up? Is it, um, well, that's basically it. Is it my tinnitus? What's going on? Why am I so unhealthy? And normally it can be linked to one major um, component of the human body, uh, it's, which is a gland. It's called the thyroid gland, okay? And it's located just here. It's about the shape of a butterfly. Um, women have it twice as big, um, so they need double the amount of iodine, okay? Now, the best form of iodine is Lugol's iodine. Unfortunately, we can't really get it from seafood anymore because fish are farmed and the ocean is full of shit, um, uh, thanks to Fukushima. So that's basically a seaweed is also crap. Iodized salt is normally refined, so it's garbage. But the best form is Lugol's iodine because that's iodine. It's it's molded with a potassium ion, which just makes it non-combustible, which is what we want. Anyway, so what do we do about sleep if you have sleep issues? Don't not get to sleep in the first place, but waking up, sorry, pre preventing waking up. So the best thing you can do, first of all, is in my opinion, uh, we'll run through a few things. Trial and error obviously is the best thing to do because everybody's different. But I would try having either a cold shower or a hot bath right before bed. Firstly, you want to ask yourself, okay, well, have I tried that? And if you have, does it spike my, does either one spike my tinnitus? And if they both spike your tinnitus, then don't do that. If one of them spikes your tinnitus and one of them doesn't, obviously try the other one, okay? If it spikes your tinnitus, don't do it. Cold showers, don't do it. Cold showers are great for some people and some people they get spikes, so you just don't do it. Like I said in my previous video, I don't teach common sense, I teach methods to get rid of tinnitus and everybody's different. I can't, you know, make a 27 hour video about all the different variables and like get really like a <laughs> and get really specific about everything. I have to give you the information and obviously you have to test it for yourself. But trust me, if you do that, the benefits are basically silence. So that's the first thing. The second thing is grounding. So I just spoke about that in my previous video, the five pillars of tinnitus. You can watch that to learn about grounding and what it does and about the inflammation. But one of the best things one of the biggest benefits when it comes to sleep with grounding right before sleep, 20 minutes before you go to bed, sit outside in the backyard on your lawn chair and don't look at electronics, meditate with your feet on the ground. One of the best things you can do is just sit in your underwear in your backyard, meditate sitting straight on the ground in sunlight. It doesn't really get much better than that, okay? Obviously, don't burn yourself, speak to your doctor, but it doesn't really get much better than that. The vitamin D, um, the antioxidants from the ground, the free electrons, okay, the mindfulness, that is, that is how you relax, okay? Anyway, so what happens is when you get those electrons in your body, they start to actually promote um, tissue development within all your organs and glands, especially the thyroid function within about um, 10 minutes, which is incredibly quick. It's incredibly amazing. So right before bed, I would have, let's just say, for example, a cold shower, okay? Then even while you're um, a little bit damp, don't make yourself sick, okay? But go outside, kind of towel off, because when you're damp, electricity travels through water, obviously. Stand on the ground for 10 minutes, meditate, and then go to bed and see if that helps you sleep. Also, there's a method you can use for grounding for sleep, okay? And we'll get to why we're talking about the thyroid in the first place. Um, you can ground yourself while you sleep with a copper wire and a metal spike in the ground outside in the dirt. Proven science, look it up before you comment, okay? Um, but do it safe. Now, why do we care about the thyroid? Because part of sleep is cortisol, and cortisol is secreted from the adrenal glands parasympathetic, sympathetic nervous system, and the number one, the numero uno regulator of the adrenal system is the thyroid gland, right there, and it's twice as big in women. So you wanna take iodine in the morning, not at night, with selenium, because iodine, Lugol's iodine, 
bottle about this big, okay? Don't be too, don't worry if it's Fiji or Evian water, just get bottled water, not tap water, okay? Bottled water um, with the lowest amounts of fluoride you can find. Six drops of iodine here in the morning. If it spikes you tonight, it's lower the dosage. Your thyroid gland runs off iodine, okay? So in order for it to properly regulate your levels of cortisol, if you're getting spikes and everything like that, what's happened is the delimiter, which is stopping it from going crazy and waking you up, is not working anymore. So it's just going, wake up, wake up every now and again, okay? And it's going to shit. Another part for that is you're eating too many plants, the antioxidants, um, the oxalates, um, are basically on top of the lectins as well, are causing issues and causing issues in your thyroid. You're getting the oxalates are binding with calcium, uh, the gram mineral calcium from your brain, and it's getting into your glands, which is where they tend to gather in the joints as well. So eating more meat can help with that because red meat is obviously the, one of the top um, hormone regulators, which you can do. So basically, let's summarize. So reduce the amount of plants you're eating. Um, reduce fruits completely. I would just get rid of them. There's no need for fruits whatsoever, okay? Grounding, cold showers before bed, along with meditation. Um, and give it a go. Try it for a couple of weeks, see how you go. And if you get any good results with it, please comment below. If you have any questions, comment below. I'll try to get to it when I can, but I hope that helps in terms of how to not wake up. Getting, you know, this is obviously you do it right before bed and, and iodine in the morning. Don't take iodine at night, it's a stimulant, but hopefully it helps.